All right, this is the recording for lecture number one. Um, I did put the recording up there, the lecture up there already, so you, know, you can watch it if you want. I did modify it earlier today. Uh, so a lot of this content is, is a couple years old, but you can live with it. Okay. You all know what e-commerce is to begin with? Buying something. I mean, they wouldn't shop at Amazon. I mean, I shop at Amazon probably ten times more than I shop at Walmart. Because, you know, here's the deal is you can go on Amazon with Amazon Prime and get it shipped in two days for free. And normally by the time, oh, I need to go to Walmart, and it ends up being a week before I go to Walmart. So it's why not do that, okay? Started off growing pretty quickly. We had the dot-com era where, you know, I don't know, some of you probably not old enough to really be involved in that. I actually ran an ISP during the dot-com time period, the 2000 time period. Everybody and their brother was buying a website from me. I would say 90% of them didn't do a darn thing with it. They put up a website that never changed. And I was like, wow, it was pretty funny. But it's going, it started off really well, kind of slowed down. Now it's picking back up again. So we're going to talk a whole bunch about that. Shopping on the web. And we've never seen the Square D, I think they call it. They actually have multiple versions of it now. It's awesome. You can take credit cards. It's, it's wonderful. And it, yeah, it's pretty cool. Allows shopping online. Business, trade of the business, there, there's just all kinds of stuff you can do. It. And they talk about what it includes. It includes like the World Wide Web, we all know what that is. Hopefully everybody doesn't know what that is. How about wireless now? Okay. Does anyone ever use apps like Five Guys is a good app, by the way, even before I started mystery shopping for them. Their, web, their app is amazing. It's so easy. I can sit there, I can say I want this, 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 hit Smith, done. It's so much easier than actually ordering in the store. How about Walmart? Y'all see the saving catcher from Walmart? Anyone use that one? Well, anytime you buy something at Walmart, if you have the Walmart app, you scan your receipt. And it, in theory, goes out and checks all these other competitors. And if it finds a cheaper price, they give you that money in a Walmart gift card. They're making it so you don't have to go shop around. But, you know, I've never got any money back yet because I don't shop there enough. Stephanie, our secretary, she just got 15 bucks the other day from it. So... But the, the online apps are getting, like the Walmart over there on, uh, was it, Midwest Boulevard in Reno. You can actually walk through the store with your phone, scanning the stuff you're buying. Then you get to register, scan the QR code. You don't have to scan everything at the register. And who knows what the theft's going to be. I mean, I could just see people, you know, not doing stuff. But, but it's pretty amazing. But wireless, mobile transactions, there's a lot more going on. And that's the one area that's probably changing more than anything else. Does that, I've never tried it. I've seen it. Because I know that, what was it, in January, you order on the app, and every time you do, you get a free Doritos Loco Taco or something like that. I've never tried it. Heck, even Taco Bueno, you can order online or with their app and pick it up. I've never tried that either. I used to switch Taco Bell. Yeah, that'd be nice. But they, they all don't. Okay. So dot .com, you know, what about businesses that are purely online? Are there some of them? Yes. Actually, are. There's quite a few of them. A lot of times you think it's a big business, but it ends up being a little dude in the oh, shack and the... And his house, and it's, you know, kind of crazy. But, yeah, there are a few of those out there. We also have business to consumer. Basically, you buy something. I go online, I buy something. But you don't always know who you're getting from. An example of that is Amazon. A lot of times you buy from Amazon. Is it from Amazon? No, it's from somebody else, okay? And sometimes when it is from Amazon, it's a pain as well. So there's, there's issues with both of them. How about business to business? A lot of businesses order online from other businesses. That happens quite a bit. How about negotiations? Anyone ever negotiate prices and stuff? eBay. Yeah, eBay is the prime. How about car dealers? Hopefully no one ever just walks in and pays what they want. So here's what I do. Whenever I buy a car, I used to drive Eileen crazy. I go in there and get my deal set up. I get to the finance office. Then you start, oh, man, I don't know about it. you got to throw in something. They always throw in tinting. Or satellite radio, they always throw in something. But a pickup truck a few years ago, they threw in a cap and automatic windows in my truck, all for free. Because you're like, oh, I don't want this. And yeah, so. But yeah, there's. In the fine print, it's in there. You pay for it anyway. Yeah, but it's. Uh, but it, negotiation is a really big deal. Uh, another example of that is uh, Sergeant Grit. He sells Marine stuff. If you ever go to grunt.com, he's an ex Marine. He started off selling one t-shirt from Vietnam that had all the places in Vietnam. Well, now he makes $9, 10000000 million selling everything from caskets to bumper stickers. 
He sells marine coins. You know what the coins are, military coins. Well, he bought them from a company online out of China. We started buying enough. We actually could skip the middleman and go directly to the manufacturer, get a much better price. And uh, he's a prime example of a lot of this stuff because uh, when he first started out, he would sell bumper stickers. Okay, He would sell a bumper sticker for a quarter. So what do you think? Good or bad bumper sticker? Well, he'd sell bumper stickers for a quarter, sold some of them. He raised the price of the same bumper sticker to two fifty. Guess what happened? Sold, sold ten times more because sometimes the price is too cheap. Makes sense. A quarter, you don't want that bumper sticker. But he did. He had really good quality bumper stickers, and he would sell it for what he'd pay for plus a little profit. But then he realized sometimes you can't do that, which makes total sense. So, all right. Uh, processes, you know, the, the, the internet gives us a lot of technology you don't have to worry about anymore. I remember when I first started going to school in the early to mid-90s, mid yeah, early 90s, Rose State had an office over there at Tinker. They had a dedicated connection from, Ro from Tinker to here. Very expensive, very slow, but that's how they did stuff. Nowadays, all we do is a VPN. A lot cheaper, a lot easier. Does anyone really know how stuff works nowadays? I mean, we, we connect. She's got a, a laptop sitting there, connects to a wireless. How is all that managed? We don't need to know that anymore, okay? Magic. Yeah, we also, exactly. We also have consumer to consumer. That's the whole eBay thing. Okay, there's actually a lot of sites that do that now. So, all right, business to government. Heck, you can pay taxes online. You can do a lot of stuff online. Yeah. When I ran my business for years, yeah, I had to do all that tax thing online. It was... A big deal, okay, and there's just, you know, pictures of some of the different areas of e-commerce, okay. Elements, uh, it says, the rough approximation, okay, the size, do you know how much, how big these companies, you really don't know, you know how much you're selling, you really don't know, you know how much dollar value, it's tough to tell. You know, talking about dollar value and number of transactions, I remember when that Marine guy got a website with me, then we made an online catalog. And he would freak out. He got his first order one day and he calls me, oh my God, I got an order. Then he's like, oh my God, I got 10 orders. Now he's like, what? I only got 150 of them this morning? You know, he kind of freaks out. So it's tough, okay? But uh, number of transactions are growing as well. They're, what happens if a website goes down now? Like, say you're going to go buy something online and it goes down. What do you do? But, okay, so I'm trying to buy whatever. I'm trying to buy this remote. And I go to this remote.com website. Go to another website. I'm still going to buy... Right, which is actually very handy. Or if it's just you. But still, what, what you do now is you just move on. You're not going to sit there... Well, <laughs> yeah, you just move on. Okay, let's continue. Okay. Activities is task performed by work. We have a lot of people who do a lot of stuff, okay? You really, in the past, you used to be able to translate, you know, specific work to a specific product. You can't, you can't do that so much anymore, okay? Now, a transaction is what, the whole process. It's the purchase, it's the sale, it's the everything. It's from... Make it and happen. Uh, that Marine guy, I don't know, he's probably changed a little bit now. But the last time I was out of this place, if you had a valid credit card, and if you bought it online, it would literally just run through the entire system. It would charge your card and print the shipping invoice automatically at the printer in the shipping department. Then they just grab the invoice, fill it, and already had a mailing label on it and everything. Now that's kind of nice. It does it all for you. And that's what's making this stuff so cheap. Whole economy is the scale thing, okay? Processes, now we have a lot of stuff that can be grouped together, and a lot of stuff is going away. Uh, a lot of, like, the credit card transaction is probably one of the biggest things, because I used to take care of a company called Aerospace Reports. And they had the whole, you know, the, the, the old manual credit card, the one that would dial out. Remember those, you know? And, but because it was cheaper. The transaction fee was cheaper on that. If you don't know what a transaction fee is, whenever you use a credit card, they pay so much just to use per transaction, a quarter maybe. Then there's a fee of a percentage. Like you might pay 25 cents plus, you know, 0.01%. That's how the bank gets their money. Well, the old dial-up was actually cheaper until the bank said, no, we're done. We're not going to 
allow you to do that anymore, even though it's cheaper. So what they ended up doing, they negotiated and ended up getting the online credit card clearing for the same price as the, the other one. So things are changing in that area. Okay. Web is helping people work more efficiently. I was at a conference in, uh, at NIST headquarters in Gaithersburg, Maryland, what, a year ago, I guess. There was a lady there who worked for NIST. She telecommuted from Choctaw, Oklahoma. I, I live in Choctaw, Oklahoma. That was kind of amazing. In Maryland? Yeah. Well, she telecommuted. She goes, oh, no, I come to the conference each year, and once a quarter or so she go on a meeting or something, but everything else she does at home. She goes, oh, yeah, I just sit in my house. My travel agent, she, the, the travel company she worked for just closed. So now she works for a noble travel company out of New England. She does all from her house, 100% from her house. And when she needs to deliver, she just, rather than you coming to her to pick up the ticket, she'll just bring them to you. But actually, if you think about it, makes it better. As a consumer, I don't have to go to them. Now she's going to come to my work or come to my whatever. So, so it's changing a lot. Uh, auctions, we all know what those are. Okay, A lot of those out there. Um, what do y'all think about Craigslist? No, it's hit or miss. It's hit or miss. It's hit or miss. It's buyer beware. Seriously, you have to, if you're buying a vehicle, you actually have to make sure that it is what they're saying. Meet in the public area. What exactly. was it, the news yesterday? A lady, a pregnant lady, went to buy some baby clothes, and the people stabbed her, ripped out her fetus, and left her for dead. What a jet, but they're, not, they're saying it's not murder because... Right, the fetus wasn't technically alive at that point, which is stupid. Technically, but, it's, the baby's considered alive if it... If it considered they're saying... Murder, could, if it took its part, if it took a part. Right. Could, the, did, was it alive or could it have lived? The, no, it the, uh, 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 the it's crazy. proves that the baby did take a breath, then it is considered homicide. But, yeah, Craigslist kind of a... I buy stuff on there, but mainly like firewood and stuff like that. But it's, you don't know what you're buying on there. Paying taxes online. Yeah, but I don't have a truck at the moment. I'm going to pick it up sometimes. Yeah, so that's right, issue. you have a Volt. Yes. My son has a truck. My father has a truck. I just don't well, currently have That's why you call your son Hagel. Hey, I know. Fish. I should. Your text him. I, I think we already read all your texts. I, text I, I, I had a roommate <laughs> that used to pick up, uh, well, she picked up guys on uh, Craigslist. Cra Not Craigslist. Nice. Yeah, I'm like, wait, wait, wait. You're telling him where <laughs> I live? And she's all like, no, I'm telling him where I live. Same place. place. So, <laughs> and so we had to get rid of that roommate, and like, yeah, still a big deal. Uh, people from back home in Michigan are like, "You kicked her out." Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we kicked her out. She yeah, she was picking a rising. Okay. All right. So obviously, businesses we all pay our taxes online. I mean, at least file our taxes. They would do their taxes yet this year. No. I owe money this year. I haven't done mine yet. So <laughs> soon. Okay. I don't but there's a lot of different categories. Kind of the ones we just talked about there. Okay. So p people adopting or engaging in it, okay? Everybody's engaging in it nowadays. Most people, I remember Eileen's dad years ago, we wanted him to get on the internet because they moved to Stillwell, which is 183 miles away. We wanted to be able to commute with him or talk to him through email. They didn't want a computer. They did not want one. So what we did is we bought him a computer, hooked it up in his house, said, no, we gave it to him for Christmas. He said, no, you don't need this. We're just going to set it up for you. It's going to be ready. Had his email. Had everything set up for him. Oh, and by the way, you can play solitaire on here. Oh, oh that was it. Because her dad loved solitaire. That was it. He was hooked forever. So, uh, yeah, he literally... trying to count the cars to make sure they're not there. <laughs> I know. And then he started doing email. And then he got to the point where, you know, when he got older, we gave him a new one for them a couple years later. But the point is, everybody's starting to do it. There's tools and technology for everybody to do everything. You can, what is it, uh, PayPal. You can sell stuff online through PayPal. It's so easy. And we all know what the Internet is. We're not going to go into detail on that. Electronic fund transactions. Pretty simple to do. Paying bills online now, transferring money, and there's a lot of scams that go along with it, which we're not going to go into People at this point. Checks through what now? They also run yeah. some of the companies running the checks. Yes, they do. Yeah. And was it, uh, I think, like certain companies like OG&E, you can pay online as long as it comes directly out of your checking account. You can't pay off credit card because then they charge you a fee. So they're doing an ACH transaction on there. So, yeah, I found a, you know, I have First Financial Bank over here. Um, 
Love them. They're a great bank. They actually give me one and a quarter percent interest on checking, not point zero zero one like everybody else. They actually give one and a quarter percent, which is pretty good. But I was looking for a place to. You ever have those bills? Like I have a property tax bill. Do y'all know what those are? Well, it's like thirty five hundred dollars a year, and it's like you got to pay it. So uh, there's a website called Smarty Pig. Found it a couple months ago, and I've been using it ever since. You go in and set up a goal. Hey, I got property taxes due in December. And it says how much money you want to donate or start off with. You know, put in initially, let's put in 100 bucks. Then it tells you, okay, how much month you need to put in it. And it automatically transfers out your checking account and gives you interest on it. So, but, which is, and it's 1% interest, which isn't as good as my checking account, but it's a lot better than a lot of other places. It's called Smarty Big. Very, 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 I like it. I do my property taxes. I do all my yearly bills. Like I use neat receipts, if you all know what that is. I pay a yearly fee for that. That's in there. So I know, hey, it's due in February. It takes out, you know, $13 a month. And next February, all the money's in there. And when your money gets in there, they can either just transfer it to your bank or you can get it in gift cards. You can get it in an Amazon Smarty gift card. Pig. Smarty Pig. And the cool is like the Amazon, you can get your money in an Amazon gift card and they give you 12% interest. Nice. It's like, wow, it's... Really, so if you use stuff like that, look into it. But there's a lot of websites out there like that. EDI, not, it was a great idea, and it will be on the test a little bit. I'm thinking about removing it, though. So it's not used much anymore. We came up with all these great payment schemes, but that's the one thing I need to change in these recordings, is payments changing. Google Wallet, Apple Pay, all that stuff, everything is changing. So I'm probably going to remove those questions from the test. But EDI was really a standard format for doing business transactions on the internet. Great idea. Got rid of errors. Printing and mailing costs. You know, I actually stopped by my dentist the other day to pay a dental bill. Because I didn't want to mail him a check. <laughs> you know, does anyone actually mail stuff still on a regular basis? I don't. I bought some forever stamps like four years ago and I still got them, which is good. Because they last forever now. Yeah, so it's, yeah, and, and the point is, you know, who actually mails stuff anymore? You don't. It's like even in my classes, when's the last time I handed you guys a piece of paper? I don't. It's pretty much all electronic nowadays. So, All right, EDI really started off with General Electric, Sears, Walmart, that kind of stuff. Oh, a funny story about Sears. Uh, you know, Craftsman, lifetime guarantee, you love it. I bought a level. You know the little, what they call pilot levels, little small level? I had it for years. Well, I put some shelves in a bedroom, and even with the level, they were still crooked, and, and I just wasn't pleased. In this over spring break, I was putting uh, some more stuff in my garage, some shelves in there. I used my level, and I'm like, there's no way that darn thing's level. So I went out, and I got this really old level. And sure enough, my level was wrong. So I went back to Sears with my pilot level from Sears, lifetime guarantee, got another level off the shelf, and put them on the checkout table next to each other. The new one was perfectly centered. The other one was like the bubble was all the way to the left. It's like, no wonder all my stuff's been crooked all these years. My stupid level was screwed. And it wasn't one of those adjustable levels. It was, the lady's like, that can't be. I should, she's like, serious, that is the weirdest thing she's ever seen. So the level was not level. So all this time I've been hanging stuff. I'm like, is it me or is that just crooked? It was the level. So, all right. But uh, EDI, great idea, just not used a lot. High implementation cost initially. It's like with a lot of stuff. Um, even Apple Pay, they say there's a high implementation cost, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So EDI, and I'm probably going to remove it from the test, but you can read through it if you want. It was just a way of clearing transactions, exchanging money. Okay. So 1997 to 2000, everybody got on the Internet. Oh, I need a website. I said most places did nothing with it. They just wanted it. A few stayed with it. 2000, 2003, some people started to invest in it. We started to get business to consumers. You started to be able to buy stuff online. Now, I remember back in about 95, is anyone taking Bill Richards' Linux class? Awesome guy. Uh, he is like, I remember, I worked with Bill in the military. I remember being in Bill's office when the internet first came up. We used Mozilla point whatever, and we surfed the internet. Me and him in his office. It was like five websites. It's like, 
check it out. I remember that. I still remember that day. We were served the entire internet in like five minutes. I think it was actually that much to load one website, but it was still it was kind of funny. But so 2000. That's when we started using it for stuff. Okay. Then we got a recession. Everybody's like, "Whoa, is this internet really gonna take off?" Yet someone bought Pizza.com for like ten million dollars recently. It was like crazy stuff. Okay. But you know, so it slowed down. And you can see the number of transactions, the amount of money spent here. It kind of slowed down there. Then we got the Industrial Revolution. You know, things started off like the U.S. started doing a lot. And I, I read something the other day. I can't remember. It's totally true. It said that two-thirds of the Earth's population live in China. I heard, something, I heard something like that. That's just crazy. You know, I look around here. We're the United States. We're number one. No, we're not. We're way down the list. China's got so much more than us. Okay. What? Uh, yeah, a lot more rules. Okay. So we started off United States stuff. Internet was United States based. Now we're going international. Does anyone buy anything on Amazon and get shipped from China? To yeah. so all the darn time. It's crazy. I got things shipped from Scotland too. I got stuff shipped because you don't know where it's coming from nowadays. Okay. So now we use. You know, there's just all kinds of stuff. They start with their own money. They start with investors. What's that? Fundme.com. You all seen that? Kickstarter. Yeah, Kickstarter the same way. There's a lot of websites like that out there, which are kind of nice. Okay. Initially, the internet was slow. I remember making websites years ago for dial-up. You had to make sure the graphics were small, wasn't all this multimedia. Nowadays, you need all that stuff because it's, if it's boring, people to come to it. Now everybody's got a high-speed internet. Hopefully no one has dial-up here. They even sell dial-up still? I'm assuming probably somebody does. Probably free somewhere. Probably free, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. We initially had barcode. We have scanners. Now we get RFID chips. I was watching a news, uh, whatever, a story about a port, I think, in Los Angeles where unloading of vessels is now all robotic. The entire thing. All the cranes, all the trucks, everything 100% computer control. There's no people in them anymore. There actually is some uh, rise or something like that of railways back that should have interfered with a lot of shipping and stuff like that. Yeah. Because of that stuff. It's, it's, and there's, there's a website, it was a TED talk about a warehouse and about controlling the robots in there. It's just, it's amazing the stuff that's going on in this stuff now. Biometrics, smart cards, all that stuff. How about email? Everybody know what email is, hopefully. You should have got an email from me today if you didn't about moving rooms. But Originally it was nothing. Now we're at the point where email, we can't live without it. Okay, I'm assuming we all check our email 50 times a day. No. Not quite. Oh, wow, you guys suck. That's okay. <laughs> okay, online advertising. What is Facebook? So many people think Facebook, you know, how is Facebook worth $65 billion when it's free? Online advertising. All that crap on there is how it works, okay? So we have obviously internet advertising, very successful. Okay, digital product sales. Initially it was small, like music. Now you can buy anything online. The one thing I've been looking for this for the last couple of weeks, I've not been able to figure this out. I'm not find a better deal. Cat litter. Y'all know what cat litter is. I have multiple cats. I buy 25 pounds of fresh step in the commissary for 8.99, which comes out to 36 cents a pound. Online, I can get it a teeny bit cheaper, but it's like $25 in shipping because it's so heavy. I bought a cat tree the other day, a 10-foot cat tree. It's huge. And it was funny because if you buy it from the manufacturer, the place, I think it was like gopet.com or something, it was like $140. Bucks. It was like $85 in shipping. So it gets crazy because they have to ship the darn thing. It weighs a lot of weight. But I found it on Amazon Prime. So you know what that meant? Free shipping. Free shipping. I ordered two of them. I went back on there like four days later to show it to a friend. All of a sudden, there's no more Amazon Prime. They probably screwed up and they're like, oh my God, that's for, no. It's no more free shipping. So yeah. somebody is like, oh crap, we flagged that one wrong. <laughs> okay. But so there's a lot going on there. Okay. Fulfilling available technology. Technology is changing every day. There's always something new. We're doing more with mobile. Bef you know, they do not have it here, but a lot of places you can buy sodas with your cell phone nowadays. You can just do all kinds of stuff with that now. So, Web 2.0 is just making things better. Okay? 
Initially, they say the first mover advantage. Now, first movers, what they're talking about there is I got on the internet first. Does it matter anymore? No, once your name, you know, a prime, what's that? Uh, you know the game Draw Something? You ever see that one where you drew something oh, and you sent it to a friend, they had to guess what it was, whatever the hell it was. Yeah. Uh, did you know that was actually powered by Amazon Web Services? And the reason it was so popular, that game went from nothing to worth billion dollars basically due to the way it was able to scale up that quickly and because they use Amazon Web Services. See, Amazon Web Services you can buy teeny tiny bandwidth or, you know, massive fiber lines clicking a button. So, you all know Netflix is run on Amazon Web Services? You know, it actually incorporates something called Chaos Monkey. You can actually buy Chaos Monkey now. Chaos Monkey now is a service you can pay for that will go to your network and randomly turn off stuff. Because the whole point of Amazon and Netflix, you want it redundant. I mean, hey, if this server crashes, you want it to continue. Well, the problem with Netflix is if, can you imagine submitting a help, t help ticket to Netflix? Hey, I was watching XYZ and it froze. How could they possibly troubleshoot that? There's no way. So Chaos Monkey just goes through Netflix equipment, just randomly turns off stuff so they can figure out where problems arise and correct it. So kind of cool the way stuff's going. Is that why it buffers a lot? What now? Is that why it buffers a lot? Or some of the episodes just freeze? Well, what happens is Amazon sends out to intermediary storage locations. And if other people are watching it, no big deal. But if you happen to be the first one starting to watch it, it's not buffered anywhere. It's not out there. It's not so cached. Right, it's not cached anywhere. If you pick a popular show, they're fine. But, you know, uh, Daredevil, original Netflix series, starts April 10th. Just saying, I just saw it today. Like 30 minutes ago. So, Yay. so I, I put on there. An episode of Family Guy, and it would not play the episode huh. no matter which thing wow. I was doing on. So I had to skip that episode yes. to get it to work. Huh, that's weird. But it's, it's weird. But yeah, I put down April 10th, no more productivity that day. It's gonna, all right, so a lot of different characteristics of it. Okay, business models, okay? A lot of people nowadays build their business around the Internet. You have to. You're stupid if you don't, okay? So e-commerce, initially we had rapid growth. Then it slowed down. Now it picked up again. What this guy say? He, Michael Palmer, he argues the business models did not exist, and there's a link on there. But he's talking about all, there's a video you can watch about him. He's talking about the different strategies that helped make all this work. I don't know if I totally believe with him, but it's fine. How about this? It says, instead of copying a model like Facebook, what if you just build something different? Okay? Where did Facebook come from? Y'all watch the, the Social Networks movie on some Netflix. If you haven't watched it, watch it. It's decent. It was Friendster, wasn't it? Uh, it was actually, sma it was Face Smash, face smash wasn't yeah. it? Where you stole the no, yeah, what, the which, from right, which one's cuter? Which oh, is a okay, hotter yeah. picture? Stole them all. Hmm. But if you haven't seen that one, go watch it. It's pretty informative. Okay. Revenue. First of all, you want to identify your customers, and you want to, you know, market to them. And that, you know, like all of a sudden, I know what the deal is. But all of a sudden, I'm getting more junk mail than ever. I was getting it, then it went away, and I'm getting it all back again. Obviously, you want to generate sales, and you want to. Keep getting sales. There's actually quite a few websites. If you go on there, pretend you're going to buy something, put it in your cart, you'll sign up and everything, put it in your cart and then leave. Guess what happens short time after that or maybe the next day? You get an email, hey, did you forget something? And would you like 10% off? A lot of them do that. A lot of pet supplies of, hey, we see blah, blah, you want some discount on that? So try doing that. If you can wait a little bit. This. Exactly. A lot of them do that. They give you free stuff. So communication is a big deal with these companies. Okay. Raw materials, a big issue. But it, it really depends on how you're working. Are you building it from scratch or not? Okay. Uh, transportation is a big deal again. But, but it's getting to the point like Amazon Prime has changed the world. Because nowadays, I could care less. But did you notice with Amazon Prime, they're like, hey, free shipping. But if you'll accept it in three days, we'll give you a free book or a, a dollar coupon or something, which is actually kind of nice because we ordered some a couple weeks ago and I didn't need it right away. 
So I was like, hey, I don't mind taking a dollar off of something else to do it. So they're changing the way all that works. Okay. Hiring and training, that's one thing that they don't talk too much about, but with some of these companies, they grow so fast, you need to be able to increase. That Marine guy, um, you know, I took care of him when he was working out of his house, and over on 23rd Street, now he's over by the airport, and his current configuration is he has these like 25 desks that are empty that he only fills during the holidays. Because he gets so much business over the holidays, he has to hire people, and he hires everyone from temp agencies now. 100% of his employees come from temp agencies. That way, if he doesn't like you, he can call, hey, I don't want to see Joe back here tomorrow, replace him. Then if you are doing good after a couple months, he calls the temp agency and says, I'm hiring Joe. So Joe becomes a full-time employee. Joe gets a raise, yet Grant.com is not paying any additional money. Just the money that was going to the temp agency is now going straight to the employee. So kind of cool the way all that stuff works. Okay. But use of technologies can handle a lot of stuff for us, make it a lot better, make things, make change a lot easier. Okay. Merchandise, it says, com combination of store design, layout, product display. Does store design matter? What do you think? Yes. It actually does. Like the physical layout. You ever notice when you walk into a grocery store, or not a grocery a convenience store, what do you always see? Picture, it's like July, it's 110 out, what's the first thing you see? Well, there's a nice cooler full of ice with the Mountain Dew stuck in it or the whatever's. That's there for a purpose. And then you take the Mountain Dew out of it. Right. But yeah, the, the, and even websites. If something's hard to figure out, that sucks. You know, like I do a mystery shopping for a company that does Papa John's and their website isn't the best. It's usable. But you know, I do it for a bunch of different companies and they all kind of have the same layout. I get to this one, it's like, dude, your website sucks. So they always, any comments? Yes, your side sucks. Okay, uh, skills, you know, and that's another issue here. A lot of places farm stuff out to India or someone else nowadays. Do you know when you call a company, you can't understand them, and you can always say, please connect me with someone in the United States? And they have to, they all do. Maybe small companies won't, but most big ones do, okay? All right, merchandising and personal selling. It says difficult to practice remotely, but nowadays it's changing. You can go on Nike's website and order whatever the heck you want, specialty, whatever. It might take a few days, but you can get them now. So that's something that's changed even since I've done this, okay? Website success, a lot of places hire that out now. I even wrote state. Our new website's coming online, I think, April 7th, okay? So you, most of the time you hire that out now, okay? All right. All right, uh, depends, the classification depends on available technologies, and that's something that's changing as well, okay, as new tools come out. Okay, all right, commodity items. Um, what are you going to sell? Are you going to sell, you know, uh, commodity items? Uh, would you buy toilet paper online? Yeah. I actually did. You buy toilet paper through Amazon, and it's set up on auto, delivery. auto every so many weeks. The nice thing is they tell you about it. Hey, we're getting ready to ship you some more toilet paper. Do you need it? Which is nice. You can delay it or whatever. You can also do it like formula and packaging. You can do all kinds of other, stuff like that. Yes. Other really cool things. For right. You. So it is. What now? A lot of vegan foods online. Oh. And you can also do it like if you do a weightlifter or things like that. Oh, all the proteins and stuff like that. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff. It says price is a distinguishing factor, but you know. That's, you know, I bought this uh, Rubbermaid fast track system for my garage just to put everything on the wall. Works well, great. I absolutely love it. But I went to Lowe's over here because I needed a couple more bars. And I'm like, wait a minute. The bars are $9.99 each. Yeah, I could buy a box that comes with two. I, I did the math, and it actually would be a little bit cheaper to buy it that way. I get home and find out that the rails, instead of 48 inches, and the box are only 30. So I was like, oh, man, I wasn't getting a good deal after all. kind of sucks. But so price is a big deal. Um, a lot of places do price match now. You know, Best Buy matches Amazon. Lowe's matches anybody plus 10%. I bought uh, something at Lowe's oh, a few months ago now. They matched Home Depot's price plus 10% off. And then they gave you a military discount. Like, wait, you know, $100 item I got for like 72 bucks. I was like, you can't complain about that. Okay. 
shoppers profiles and a lot of that stuff now like on Amazon hey I see you bought whatever do you want to look at this too stuff like that uh, there's a company downtown called uh, Synergy Datacon it used to be the old radio supply on Classen and Forth I actually made their first website years ago as well and they're like hey you know when they're buying cable can we make it show the connectors as a hey it's an awesome idea you know it's really cool stuff okay yeah, it's pretty, yeah. how about jewelry? Would you buy jewelry online? There's some things you don't buy online. What I do like to do, though, is like, look, like, years ago, uh, I bought Eileen a Movado watch. I went on a cruise, and, oh, Movado was a big deal then, so there was, everyone was selling Movado watches. I says, you know, let me look online. I'll see what I can get it once we get off the cruise. I ended up finding it the BX online catalog cheaper than you're going to find anywhere else. But I was able to look at it in person, find out exactly what it was, the make and model, and touch it. So that's why it's kind of like Best Buy. What, what is Best Buy nowadays? That's the touchy-feely store. You walk in and you touch the television, then you buy it at Amazon. And how it works? Pretty much every, unless you need it right then, or you buy it at Best Buy, so you have it right then, order it at Amazon, once it arrives, then you use your 45-day return policy and give it back. So it works pretty good that way. All right. How about Kodak cameras? When's the last time you seen a Kodak camera? But they're not that popular. You know, they, they, Kodak was one of those companies that decided not to change. No, this is what we make. No, you don't understand. You need to change. If people aren't buying your product, there's a new product coming out. You need to change. So Kodak kind of killed themselves. And they used to be in the S&P, you know, the, the top 100 and then the 500. Now they're nothing. So also diversity, you know, which groups appeal stuff. You know, um, you all know what okra is, obviously. You all love okra. Now, I'm from New England. That's like a weed. We wouldn't eat that crap. But it really depends where you're from. You know, different places sell different things, okay? Traditional commerce, this is better... You know, for products relying on personal stuff. So you're going to come in and buy whatever. I'm going to make it for you in the back and then give it to you. Electronic commerce works with a lot of other things. Works for commodity items we've talked about and some personal items, but not as many. Okay. All right, Web 2.0 is just faster. The Internet, there's actually a high-speed backbone that goes through Pryor, Oklahoma, goes from Florida through Pryor, hence that's why Google's there. And then goes across the country. But um, you ever notice our, our back? Like, everyone have Cox, I'm assuming. You keep updating your speed. Like I had the 75 meg plan that I automatically upgraded to the 100 meg plan. I got the 150 meg plan. It's just amazing on how. When they that, upgraded. My bill went up without them telling me. Uh, oh. They didn't even tell me they were upgrading my. Oh, my bill didn't go up. Because I had the top of the line package they had. Then it kept going up and up and up. And uh, I don't know. It's kind of nice. How about this bottom bullet here? 24 hours a day. Is anyone shops in the middle of the night? Yeah. I always do. You're there like, oh, man, I need a... Let me order that real quick. Yeah. It's just crazy, okay? Okay. Competitive bids. Is it easier to get it? Yeah, a lot of times online you can. You, even though you might not think about it, checking Amazon, checking Walmart, check something else, that is kind of getting in competitive bids. But also on eBay, it's trying to outbid, have a top bid with yeah, that's true. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't buy much on eBay. Some things, I but. I use your PayPal that way. If the oh, there's any issues, get the money back. Doesn't yeah. pay me or it doesn't ship that item. I contact. Yeah. I bought eBay. something through Moby, whatever. See them on Facebook. Hey, you buy? It was a battery backup for cell phone. It was the the best price I've ever seen. So I bought one, and they shipped it to me. They didn't pay enough postage, so the post office kept wanting me to put. You know, put two dollars in your envelope. Hell no, I ain't. So they kept wanting to deliver it, and I just contacted my credit card company. And said, nope, never received. Got my money back, and then finally the mail lady the other day, I saw her because I had to sign a letter. I said, I'll just send that crap back. So it's they don't always do it. it says Web 2.0 is a term given to describe a second generation of the World Wide Web, focused on the ability availability for people to collaborate and share information online. Okay. No more static HTML. Now we have dynamic web pages. 
So I used to build all the static web pages. And I actually built, even before we had D2L, I built the very first one we used here for student information, uh, for taking tests and stuff online. But that's pretty much what we're talking about. Everything's dynamic. That's what you really want. Blogs, wikis, all that stuff now. Okay. It says, it says, shown major light in, uh, and here's, this is, okay, don't freak out about this Nick picture. Okay. It says, Web 2.0 has shown major issue affecting many people today. This is from Dominic. Trust me, this pertains to all of you. This is the big issue. You ready? Can you read that? Basically, said, how many of you have gone somewhere or to the bathroom and, dude, I forgot my phone. Come on, that's that's prime Facebook time or email. Now, just, just this morning, I doubled back to my office to get the. There you go. You're gonna be there five minutes. That's prime whatever time. You so. Yeah, but it's a, it's there's so many times you go somewhere. Oh man, you know, you know, Virginia was on the cruise this last week, and half times she couldn't use her phone. That's like a heart attack nowadays. It kills people. So, <laughs> all right. They do, but it's expensive. It's weird. She went on the magic carnival magic. A year ago, when you went on the carnival magic, they had a beta test of an unlimited internet plan. It was a little bit slow. But for 55 bucks, you have the entire thing. They got rid of it. Now they're coming up with a new social media, but they're, they just haven't rolled it out on all the ships yet. So is it's, it satellite? Yeah, it's satellite. So it is slower. She tried to make a FaceTime call with me. The connection wasn't good enough for FaceTime. So we ended up just doing iMessage, which actually worked great. So Because that buffers. Even if she's on the line, I can send her 10 messages. Hmm. And when she gets on, they all appear, so, which is kind of cool. Okay. Payments online. You know, taxes, welfare support, a lot of stuff can be done instantly. Before, when I had to pay taxes years ago, they had, I don't know if you know anything about sales tax, but you got to pay by a certain day. But if you pay early by a certain day, say the sales tax is 8%. Well, if I pay early, I can cut off 1%. So I really I only have to pay the government 7%. I can pocket the 1%. But if I pay it after the due date, then not only do I pay the entire 8%, but I have to pay an additional quarter percent. But nowadays, you can actually, you can pay it at the last second. You can wait till 11 o'clock, like you all do your homework, as long as the website's out. I still remember, I was, I had to mail in my property taxes to get my discount. I had some good sales that month. Snowed in. I'm like, oh man, because it had to be postmarked by the 15th. So I have a John Deere tractor with a snow plow. I plowed my entire driveway in my entire street. So I, I'm from New England. I like plowing snow. The mailman never came. I was so ungodly pissed. So I call up the post office, talk to the inspector general in Choctaw Post Office. <laughs> and they're like, no, 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 they delivered now. And then, then he calls back, yeah, I'm sure she did. She, no, she goes, she went to your street. Your entire street was snowed in. I'm like, what did you do to understand? As I plow the entire street all the way from one end, all the way to the other, like, oh, it's like, so she didn't do any. Well, we can't say that. Yeah, I can say that. But it sucked because I lost my discount and it sucked. I had to pay a fee. Okay, but electronic payments, obviously easier now. It reduces commuter cost traffic, e-commerce, okay? But, you know, like I said, that lady was living in Choctaw going to stuff for the, for the NIST people. But she does have to fly, so it is creating more air, air traffic, just not that frequently. Uh, recently, I went on another trip somewhere, and there was a guy who worked in Houston at an oil rig. And, but he lived here. So basically what would happen is Friday evening, he'd fly to Oklahoma. Sunday evening, he'd fly back to Texas. That's a lot of flying. But they paid enough and paid his airfare, so I guess it's worth it. So. All right, poor choices. Perishable foods, that's changing. What a guy recently, remember Boston had the big old snow, was selling snow. Shipping it to you within 20 hours. You pack it in dry ice, you can buy perishable stuff online. And they ship it in dry ice. And it can sit on front of your house, because we bought something, was a year ago, and it got delivered to the house. I'm like, you know, in the summertime, the sun, the sun, I was like, that stuff is dead. Sure enough, it was still frozen solid because it was, it was in a box with cushioning. Inside there was this styrofoam thing 
packed with dry ice around the product. I'm like, that's crazy. So, but that you know, high cost items. I would be worried. I was at the news article I watched yesterday about this guy. His packages kept getting broken. Put a security camera up. Showed the post office person just tossing them up from the USPS, tossing them onto his porch. It's like, wow. Unique items are also not a good choice because you know theft value plus personalization is not the best way, even though it is getting better online. Okay. So, e-commerce has become more available and accepted by general population. We all do it nowadays. But does that mean everybody does it? No, there's still some people who won't. My, uh, Eileen's mom, ex-mother-in-law, she died recently, but I still remember they would not pay bills online. Would not. A lot of people are that way. They won't pay anything online. I pay everything online. So, online grocery. Amazon does that. Amazon ships groceries now. So, more and more places are at. Just not around here. Okay. All right, additional problems. How about return of investment? How long to get my money back? When I ran my ISP years ago, I had a bunch of servers. They all needed to be replaced. I was kind of like, it's going to be about $15,000 to replace all my servers. Because when you run a business, your servers have to be up and running. You can't wait till they die. And my warranties ex were expiring. I needed to replace them. And I said, you know, it's going to take me too long to get my money back. So that's when I went out of my business. But, uh, you know, that's something to think about. Retraining employees. You know, I used to go on vacation, so I still do. But can you imagine running an ISP that has to be up 24 hours a day, 365, and go on a cruise? What do you do? Had to have someone available to fix no matter what. And it's kind of like having a dog. You know, same thing. Someone has to take care of it. Okay. Technology and software issues, there's always... Heck, Rose's email server went down the week before spring break. It was... They fixed it where internal only mail was working, and then they finally fixed it a couple days later where external mail. So if there was a time period when you got no emails from the instructors, they all showed up at the same time. That's because our mail server went down. But technical issues happen. Cultural difference. We'll talk more about that here in a second. How about, you know, I've always bought in a certain way. So a lot of people don't want to switch. You all seen the Domino's Pizza Tracker. I was in Dallas, but a year ago, maybe nine months ago, and I saw where the low, closest Domino's was, and I brought, I ordered online, and it was cool because you could actually see. And Stephen is now delivering your pizza, so I looked and I saw exactly how, and I said, okay, it's gonna be right at five minutes. And I'll be darned. I'm in the hotel. I opened the door of the hotel, and he walks right up. I'm like, dude, that was like perfect. <laughs> Wish more places. But would you order more pizza because of it? Obviously, I ordered because of it. So. And what is it, the new, uh, the new, there's an Android watch out that you can, if you have it in your favorites, you can order your pizza with your watch. So again, order me a pizza. So it's, it's crazy. Okay. Total cost of buyer and seller incur. The costs vary. And it says, well, gathering information, negotiating purchases. I'm very big on the gathering information part. I like to look at a bunch of websites before I decide. But now that a lot of places are starting to price match, I don't know about that. Commissions, brokerage fees, searching, acquiring. Sometimes you buy from a place and they don't actually have it in stock. A lot of times you see that on Amazon. You're buying it today. We will ship it on the 28th of March, which means they don't have it. They're actually having to acquire it from their supplier. So, All right. So electronic commerce is a vertical integration strategies. How things work is what's changing. Okay. Transaction costs at all levels. You know, uh, what was it over the holiday? There's a big deal with, like, even Amazon, they do it now, where FedEx and UPS, they don't ship to your house sometimes during peak season. They ship it to your post office. Then they make the last mile, they call it. But, you know, so things are changing. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Strategic alliances, a lot of times places will work together. You see that a lot in airlines. They combine themselves all the time. But sometimes you order from one, but it's really another. You know, a lot of the mystery shopping companies that I work for, they're all basically the same company. They're just different offshoots of it, okay? A lot of times they'll share purposes together. Sometimes you come together. You'll see a lot of companies are buying each other out all the time online. What was it? Uh, like Nest. I have a Nest thermostat. Nest bought them out. Then they recently bought out Dropcam. So there's always, you know, buying up someone else. and So, all right, uh... 
NetLab is a prime example. We're going to look at Smart Swipe here in a second. Okay, actually, what's Smart Swipe? We're not going to watch the video. You can go watch it if you want. What we're talking about is a little device you have in your desk where you actually swipe your credit card. It's actually encrypted in the device even before it's sent across. Yeah, could work. So you can go watch the video if you want. That's what they're talking about here, dynamic SSL. It actually does the encryption on your end. So you're really only sending the encrypted data part. And a lot of things are changing in that area. We'll cover more when we get to the payment section on that one. Okay. Network. Okay. It says, well suited to your information intensive technologies. You know, like they say here, you can get together, organize sweaters, you can build stuff in great uh, groups. And it was a company, I was trying to think of the name, where you could actually hire out people to do stuff for you. I can't think of it. But there's a name for it. I can't think of the name. But you could order it online, and they basically farm it out to everybody else. Can't think of it. If I remember it, I'll, I'll let you know. But it's going to happen more and more, where we're going to have... You buy from one company, and that one company actually hires other companies to build it for them, and then ship it to you. I mean, I can't remember. Okay, I knew about it earlier today. Well, if I can think of it, I'll let you know. But, you know, like they're saying here, you buy it, but really they're buying it from other people, and then they, like that Marine guy, during the holidays, he hires more employees to sell more stuff. Same thing. Okay. Diminishing returns. How about this? And this is adding more fertilizer. Y'all know what fertilizer is where you are. Hopefully some of you use it. But if you keep adding fertilizer, what happens? Kill whatever you're growing. Sooner or later, it, if you add too much, it goes away. So you can think of the same thing with employees. Too many employees will make it worse. Not enough employees will make it worse. So things change. Okay? Sometimes you bring in too many partners, it goes away. Yeah. So there, a lot of things change like that. How about telephones? When you, what, you know, if you're the only one in the world that has a telephone, what good is that telephone? It's worthless. But with a bunch of people who have telephones, that's great. But what if there's too many phones and now no one can make a call because they're all busy? So it does change. Okay. All right. Email. What if you really don't have any central organizations? You know, we can talk to people on email, but initially it wasn't so valuable. Nowadays, we can't live without it, okay? Internet email accounts, corporate email accounts, that's pretty much a requirement nowadays. If our internet goes down here, we might as well go home. So that's pretty much how it works, okay? Let me make sure we finish this up. Yeah, we got 10 minutes, okay. Um, it says, uh, multiple business units owned by a common set of shareholders. A lot of times you see that one company actually has multiple companies underneath it, kind of what we talked about. I'm going to skim over these a little bit here. The value chain, is human resource value? Actually it is, someone who makes stuff. Human capital is a value, purchasing is a value, and where to buy it from is you know, a value in there. Identifying customers, you know, we hire a company to market for real estate. Is that valuable to us? We pay money for that. Sure it is, it's very valuable. We hire people to give us mailing lists. So, that's kind of what we're talking about here, okay? SWAT. I used to have you do an assignment in this, but you're not doing it anymore. It's basically strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Let's give you an example here. What does the company do well? What are their weaknesses? What do they do poorly? Where can they improve? I actually had you do a project where you picked a company, like Walmart. Would you say Walmart's online presence is the best? No. no. Their strength is probably in the brick and mortar stores. You know, some of Walmart stores now you can actually buy it online and they will put it in a locker at your local Walmart store. Kind of like the site to store. Ours doesn't support it here yet. But wouldn't it be nice if you knew exactly what you want to buy it online and then 30 minutes later it's in the little locker at the front, you've already paid for it, they give you a code, you unlock the locker and leave with it. So they are trying to change this. What about threats? People are always trying to take over what you do. Okay, you don't have to do that assignment anymore. Okay, let's move on. Okay, we're almost out of this. Uh, international, that's a big deal now. Like we mentioned, a lot of times on Amazon you get something from Korea. And a lot of times it has to be signed for, or they don't put the right darn customs form with it, which sucks. Uh, they actually, did this last week I just happened to be home. I had two certified letters show up and a stupid package from China show up. I have to order something. Like, wow. My son lives in a house I own in Dell City. And he doesn't dump the trash enough. He parks on the lawn. So every time he does something, I get a certified letter. 
Get up, Burke, and the lawn. It's like, oh, kills me. Okay. So trust issues. Who do you buy from? Yeah. But would you just buy from anybody? Got to look at the seller rating. Right. But, you know, a lot of times I'll do I look at, hey, what are the reviews of this place? Okay. How about this one? Don't worry about it. They don't know your dog. <laughs> Same kind of things. Okay. Language barriers. It says, by 2015, 70% of e-commerce transactions will involve at least one outside the U.S. company. Okay. 50% is currently in English. I hate when you get to websites not in English. And then Google can't translate it. It's like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. It kills me. Okay. Uh, I'll, get, I'll get a good picture of languages here in a second. All right. This is large site translation may be prohibited. When I first started my internet business years ago, somebody wanted me to hire them to translate everything to Spanish and everything else. Is that needed? Yeah, especially if you want to get the Spanish clients or the whatever clients, okay? But Google does most of it now, okay? South Africa, this is from 2001. 11 languages make up 99.5% of their language. Can you imagine having a website in South Africa where 11 languages are their main language? It's not like, I mean, if you look at the percentages, so which one would you make, which language you make a website for? Uh, it's Zulu. Yeah. But that's still only, that's only a quarter of the people. Those actual languages? Yeah, these are the actual languages in South Africa. Well, that's what we'll Yeah, just take the 36%. I mean, they have to know the two main ones. Yeah, I kind of get a few. But still, you don't know that one guy that's speaking, um, well, that's a low one here. Other. Sosotho. <laughs> oh, the one guy who's yeah, the other. How about this Sosotho guy? What if he's going to buy $8 billion worth of stuff? You well, don't know. It has to be like the one language. There has to be a rich language. language. Yeah, yeah, there is like exactly. Yeah. 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 But it's just amazing the amount of languages out there. So wouldn't they speak the primary language but also speak their language? They might. But again, these 11 are the primary languages. It's not like the top one's the primary. They are all primary. They have a language. They probably speak all of that. I don't know. That's just it's crazy the way that works. So cultural issues. Anticipating how the part of your transaction will act in circumstances. We'll see more about that in a second. But not everybody does things the same way. Wording is different. How about this one? General Motors made the Chevy Nova. Tried to market it to Spain or Mexico. Nova in Mexican means it doesn't go. Why would you buy a car that's literally called it does not go? That's stupid. Okay, so okay in Brazil, yeah, okay, that's a basically a swear word. It's bad. Okay, how about white versus black? You know, some people white is purity, black is death. So why would you market something in black? You know, it's just it's very India inappropriate use of cow images on cartoons. I mean, I watch Amazing Race. I'm assuming some of you've seen Amazing Race. You ever seen when they go to India? There's literally cows everywhere. Because they can't kill them, they can't eat them, they just go crazy. Cow Going around. along with the cultural issues, KFC, when they first released in Japan, right. they had issues because it said finger looking good, and apparently oh. in Japan, that's a major taboo. Maybe. taboo. Oh, wow. All right, we got like five minutes, we got to finish this up. Okay, Japanese won't pay by credit card. So how do you do that? They made it so you could actually go in and pay to 7-Eleven. Kind of. Still buy it online. Just go pay at 7-Eleven. They process the transaction at that point. It's kind of a cool idea there. So governments do differently. Some areas won't let it work. Some places do. Nigeria, I guess everything's legal there. Okay. Filter content. What about China? Half the stuff is filtered in China. So what are they actually seeing when they do try to go to your website? Okay. It's a censorship. There it is. China. Wrestling with issues preventing by the growth of the Internet as vehicles. You know, there's always something you hear about them. They're just now getting this, or they're blocking that, or whatever. So it's tough. The cultural issues is a big deal. Infrastructure. So we have high-speed internet here. But what if you're in, you know, the sticks out in somewhere, Zimbabwe or something, and, you know, Facebook now has a new version that automatically changes based on your internet speed? If you had a crappy speed? Now, one thing that got me was on Google. I was in uh, Cozumel, Mexico, staying in a resort there. It was driving me crazy for a while because every time I bring up Google, will be in Spanish because it's checking your location 
it would automatically send you over to the Spanish page. It's like, I'm not in, I'm not, I'm, I'm in Mexico, but I want the English version, so it drives you crazy. Okay, so government obviously heavily regulated outside the U.S., international, not so much sometimes, more in other times. Okay. Uh, local connection costs. Internet here, do y'all, you think our internet's too expensive? What do we all pay for just internet? Anybody know? I pay, I pay $100 now. $100, but that, I don't have TV, so that's. I don't have TV, I yeah. pay for just Yeah, does still have TV? Netflix. One of you. Yes, there's Netflix. It's Netflix. There's Netflix, there's Hulu, and several others that you can watch. Yeah. yeah. Shows. Say, what was it, a year ago, uh, or two years ago, Two years ago, I went on a 14-day uh, a cruise to Italy, you know, all that area, Italy and France. And I'm real big on when I leave the house, I turn everything off, especially on vacations. I plug everything, turn everything that I can off. Well, I turn off the cable box. Came back, three months later, I hadn't turned it back on yet. So I'm like, wait a minute. Because I was always busy. And I would, I would stream it or something. Because remember, cable, you either had to record it or you had to wash it when it aired. So when I said three months, I went without TV. So I got rid of it, and they, they're not happy with that. They're still not happy with that. I mean, the cable company, that is. Hey, you sure you don't want to sign up to get whatever? No, I don't want it. you're free. Freight, shipping, stuff like that. Uh, you know, that's a big issue. Insurance is an issue. So there's a lot of stuff going on there. Okay. A lot of times you ship partway. That's one thing Amazon wants to do is set up warehouses in, organ in areas where they ship everything to the warehouse and you can get it delivered in 30 minutes, that kind of stuff, okay? Um, yeah. International transaction paperwork costs lots of money and somebody has to pay for that. We're not gonna go over the picture. And that's about it. Okay, we're done with this. Okay, I, I, I knew it was gonna be cutting it close. Okay, so we're gonna meet next Monday. Um, the assignment I will put up there and I will tell you more about it next week, but I'm gonna, I'll put a couple of things online and I'll try to get the second assignment so you can Good. Um, are we allowed to use like apps that allow exploits into the